So, I mean, you've produced so many iconic songs and albums and such. When you're doing your work, do you get a sense when the work's almost done with a particular album, which one's going to be a hit? Are you at that point now where you can just tell? You know what, Scott? It's a weird, elusive thing. So my answer to that would be no. <laughs> like, you know, when we're doing Thunderstruck, you know, and right, the right. song almost done, and then Angus had this idea, you know, Bruce says, oh, we need an intro. So he says, oh, I got this idea I've been working on. So, okay. So he lights a cigarette, puts it in his mouth, and it starts out, okay, roll the tape. So he goes, ding, 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 he plays through the whole intro and like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And keeps going and the verse starts and Angus is still going. And I'm like, okay, still going. Chorus comes. He's still going and Bruce is going out. Just keep the tape roll. So one take, Angus does that through the whole song. And at the end of the song, the ass and the smoke goes <laughs> like that. Ah, oh, Bruce, how's that? You like that, mate? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. He said, let's you know, try another pass. We tried a couple other passes, but we ended up going with that first take. So if you listen to the mix now, it's throughout the whole song. I mean, there's places in the mix that we, we ducked it down under and you can barely yeah. hear it, but yeah. it's one take through the whole song. But that song, we did the song, none of us had, you know, it was a great song, but none of us had the that feeling that it was going to become one of their iconic songs up or, up there with, you know, back and black and, and, uh, highway to hell and hell's bells and all like, it's one of their, Oh, it's a, it's an anthem. Songs. It's like, we never had an inkling about that at all. How about, how about now when you look back on that though, and you hear these songs of just now, like they become anthems, rock anthems. I still can't do, believe it. I still think of back. Do you think, do you think cool? back in the studio at all these weird little things that have been going on when they're trying to figure it out and yeah. sort of work their way through it. And then there's bands like, uh, did a well a couple records but we did a record with a band called blue murder and it was john sykes who wrote co-wrote a, a lot of that big um, white snake record with coverdale i mean you right. know, he was in tigers of pantang he was in thin lizzy thin, thin lizzy yeah yeah awesome awesome guitar player uh so we do in that record carmine a piece on drums tony frank franklin on bass i mean it was just a dream team we had geffen 100 percent behind us it was just it was huge, done, done, done. Finished the record. Uh, well, funny little side story. Uh, we, Joan was trying to find a singer and he was trying to get Glenn Hughes and a whole bunch of other guys and just couldn't get it together. So John says, ah, fuck it, I'll sing. And uh, <laughs> we didn't know he could sing. So Bob says, well, go down, go down to L.A. He says, you know, do the vocals with John. Let's you know, see how it, it turns out. So we go down to L.A. and we'd sent had the tapes shipped down to us. Well, I'm down there 10 days and no tapes yet. So we're like, where the hell's the tapes? Oh, stuck in customs. We're like stuck in customs. Oh, so, you know, it's on the big two inch reels, right? We had probably had 30 of them being sent down. Well, the band's called blue murder. One of the child's one of the songs is called sex child. <laughs> and we had a slave and a master reel. So you get Blue Murder, Sex Child, Slave and Master. The border guys are saying, no, we're not allowing these out until you produce the machine that can play back these snuff films. He thought they were former oh. snuff films. Oh, so my, oh my God. Almost three weeks before we could clear the tapes. To get oh, my out. gosh. But, you know, so we do this record, you know, one of the best records I've ever done. I mean, I love that record. And over the years, I've run into so many people that say, what happened? A blue, that, that was my favorite band. You know, to this day, there's bars in, in uh, down the States you can go into and the jukebox is Blue Murder. But did it ever sell? No, it just was one of those records that didn't do it. So like I say, sometimes you think something's going to be huge and it just, what happened to that? And then other songs that you're like, oh, that was a good song. And that's like one of the biggest things. So wow. I can't ever tell. Hey, thanks for joining us. Check out our other vignettes and full episodes from a wide variety of guests for more great content. Please like, share, and subscribe. And become a member at socialenergypresents.com to access premium content and earn valuable energy points just for watching.